नमस्कार श्री श्री राम कृष्ण कथामृत तव कथामृत तप्त जीवन कविड़ कलमशापहम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदादत भुवि गृणंती भुरीदा जन श्री श्री राम कृष्ण कथामृत प्रथम भाग तृतीय खंड ष्ठ परिच्छेद एंड श्री रामकृष्ण has beautifully explained to us what happens with the mind's upward journey from the lowermost plane in our body to the highest plane the seventh plane the sahasrara on the top of our head how the the uh, what, what kind of changes they start happening as the mind starts coming up and up and up and up having enjoyed all the worldly pleasures having tasted the sweet and bitter fruits of all these enjoyments now are really are they enjoyments that is what uh, we should question because if they were to be pure enjoyments we could have only enjoyed them with the happiness with the pleasure with the joy but that doesn't happen and while we are busy in those worldly enjoyments we keep on experiencing the happy and not so happy fruits of it the, the joyous fruits and also the uh, sad fruits the sweet fruits as well as the bitter fruits now this whole thing happens till our mind is on the first three planes of the plane of uh, the, the the reproductive organ the plane of evacuation organ and the plane at the navel and then having tested the sweet and bitter fruits then mind starts its upward journey comes up to the level of the heart to that anahata chakra and enjoys the blissful experience of that divine illumination of the divine light and start saying what is this what is this eki eki and he finds that happiness without any sadness that is the only one uh, angle of the emotional experience he gets from this plane onwards there is no the duality as such no diverse experiences no joy and uh, sadness or pleasure and pain or sweetness and bitterness then it is only the divine please and then as the mind comes up to the level of throat it is nothing but chanting lord's name nothing but repeating the god's name nothing but singing the lord's leela about lord's leela then the mind again continues its upward journey and comes to this sixth plane the ajna chakra some people pronounce it as ajna also and here what happens having come there the mind gets the vision of its chosen deity of the beloved mother now mother cannot hide herself having come the mind having come to this uh, plane now the mind sees the mother mind wants to rush to her to touch her to embrace her to sit on her lap but that doesn't happen because the barrier of i is still there the i is still there differentiating between the child and the mother differentiating between the servant and the master 
differentiating between the devotee and the Lord. And Sri Ramakrishna had given that example of the lantern. That when we see that beautiful flame burning in the lantern, we want to touch it. But as we bring our finger near to that flame, what happens? The glass hood, the glass cover on the lantern prevents our finger touching the flame. And exactly like that, this aham, this I, although it is, now this aham is totally different from the aham that was when the mind was dwelling in the lower three planes. That was the unripe aham and in Sri, Sri Ramakrishna explains it. That was the unripe ego and as the mind has started coming up and up and up and has come here, that I still has remained but now that I is a ripe ego. It is more of a positive ego. It is a devotee's ego like Sri Ramakrishna had told. That this army remains, but make that army, convert that army, convert that aham into devotees aham, devotees ego. Now with that barrier still being there, that army is still here, that's why we can see the God, we can have the vision of our Ishta, we can have, see the form of our beloved mother, but we still cannot embrace our mother. We cannot hug our mother. We cannot climb on the lap of mother and Ma, I want to come and sit here. No, that doesn't happen. That happens when, when the mind climbs up on the seventh plane on the top of the head, all the barriers vanish. Then there is no more I and you. There is no more differentiation. There is only oneness. And Sri Ramakrishna has told about that state that a person can remain in that state at the most for 21 days. And after 21 days, the body drops off. And it happens only in case of incarnations like Sri Ramakrishna. Only in case of incarnations like our Ma, only in case of incarnations like Sri Radhika, that having reached the top, they can come down. Now on this uh, stages of uh, mind going up and down, up and down, and like Sri Ramakrishna said, once the mind comes to this stage of the, the, the uh, throat, or the forehead of Vishuddha or Adnya, then what happens? Then the mind does not want to go down. Then it is only the lower, lowest, the lower most plane that mind can go is up to heart because it wants to enjoy that place. And uh, I always remember Swami Turyananda talking about our Ma, Hari Hari Maharaj. He used to tell the devotees that, look, we all, we people, we are struggling ourselves, doing all these austerities and sadhanas and meditations to bring our mind up. But look at our Ma. Her mind dwells always in the higher most plane and because of her compassion for her children, because of her compassion for her beloved children, she tries to bring the mind down. Our efforts are to bring it up, take it up. But Ma, all the time, she is so busy bringing down her mind from that plane to the level of heart. Or at the most uh, to the to, to the level of uh, throat, and uh, that 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 is the difference, of course, between Ma and uh, Ma's uh, wretched children. But still, we are Ma's children, and if we are able to take our mind to the Adnya Chakra, 
and we can get the vision we can get the vision of our mama cannot uh, prevent us from getting her vision and then the last is of course the mind entering into sahasra and mind be mind becoming one with the ultimate reality but sri ram krishna tells brahmos but you people are you are devotees you are following path of devotion that is very nice continue with that no need to go on the seventh plane when 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 the uh, lift or the elevator is going up to the uh, up and up just press the button of 6 and get down there <laughs> don't, don't go to seventh plane so that is what uh, has happened uh, in our uh, reading of 6th uh, chapter up till now and now today shri ramkrishna is going to tell us about uh, samadhi hole kormutta that once you reach the level of getting up on the seventh plane on in the sastra the mind merges uh, then all the, uh, uh, the scriptural injunction duties as per scriptural injunctions you know offering to god offering water offering uh, the samhitas and uh, doing uh, yagya yag all these things that they, they drop off doing sandhya doing puja everything drops off and then purvokta shri takur tells us about his own experience of thakurer torponadi kurmodyag that how shri ramkrishna himself his duties of offering the uh, water to god at the time of performing worship we we we, we offer uh, water to god that is part of the ritual and what sri ramkrishna had experienced that he was unable to do that duty also and that experience sri ramkrishna is going to tell us now so sri ramkrishna continues his talk with the brahmos and says samadhi hole so kurmatyag hoy jaye once you attain samadhi once your mind gets merged with the one ultimate one in that seventh plane in the sahasrara sar shob kurmatyag hoy jaye all duties they drop off there is no need also you automatically your body gets conditioned in such a way that you are not able to do any of those duties puja jopadi kormo bishoy kormo sho tyag hoye the formal worshiping the deity hmm the formal worship and also the other worldly duties other worldly duties everything gets over then you are just one with the almighty you are just one with the paramatma now uh, prathome kormer bodo hoy choi thake what ram krishna says in the beginning one is very active very active i am doing this i am doing that you know you ask somebody uh, can you please do this uh, thing for me no, 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 i don't have time i've got so many things to do they, they are so busy prathome in in the initial stages in your worldly life kormer bodo hoy chai thaki hoy chai thaki o baba i no time at all i wish there were 25 hours in a day and even if there were 25 hours in a day even then these people would have said the same thing wish there were 26 hours in a day you know they are so in, so much engrossed even if there is no work they will get and pull some kind of work on them to show them how show people how busy i am joto ishbur er dike e gube totoi kurmir adambor kome when as the same man who is so much engrossed in the works as he advances towards the god as he advances towards the divine 
outer uh, expression, outer display of all those works and actions, it starts becoming less and less. Then there, there is automatic break. Break is applied to all that working tendency. When the person starts moving on the path of devotion, on the path of spirituality towards the God. Even ki tar naam gungan porjunto bundh hoi jaye. So much so that even the chanting and singing of the glories of God also stops. And one just enjoys the bliss of getting merged in the Lord. Even if not fully merged, even going on that path itself. From here to here, that path itself, the duties drop off. You don't have to do any further ritualistic duties or obligatory duties. Then God is there to take care of all your needs. Then Sri Ramakrishna says, Shivunathir Prati. Now addressing to Shivanath, he uh, tells uh, this thing. Jatakkon tumi shobai ashoni tomar naam ashoni tomar naam gun kotha onek hoyeche. Now he is telling Shivanath, ha, how it happens. This is an example uh, Sri Ramakrishna is giving to all the Brahmo devotees, pointing to Shivanath Shastri who has come there from Calcutta to participate in the semi-annual uh, religious uh, festivities of the Brahmos. So Sri Ramakrishna says, Till the time Tumi Shobhai Ashni, you, you were not here, you, you had come to this gathering. Hmm. Tomar naam goon kotha onik hoiche. People were talking about you, about you, your name, about your glories, hmm. about your qualities. What great person Shivanath is. Till the time you were not here, people were talking about you. All good things, of course. <laughs> people were talking about you, about your great deeds, about your name, about your qualities. And then, Jai tumi eshe pudi cho. Omni she sho kotha bundu hoi gilo. The moment you landed here, what happened? All that talk about Shivanath, what a great person he is, all that talk just got stopped. Hmm. And why, why it happens? Why, why, why it stopped? Tokhon lok bole, ei je Shibunat Babu eshe chen, tomar bishoye onno shop kotha bando hoi jai. Now what happens? The moment you landed here, all the talk about you, all the praises of Shivanath, they stopped. And then people started saying, Tokhon lok bole, ei je Shivanath babu eshe chen. Oh, it's the same Shivanath about whom we were talking all this while. Now he's here. Tomar bishoye onno shop kotha bando ho chen. Now all the talk about you, about your greatness, about your knowledge, about your uh, great talks, everything stops and people just keep looking at Shivanath Shastri. So, the moment we reach that place, we stop talking. That's what Sri Ramakrishna is indicating. That once the objective is reached. The, all the talk, all the work just stops. There is no need for anybody performing any ritualistic worships like uh, uh, the formal worship or doing japa, repeating the holy name. That also stops. All the work stops, your meditation stops, then you are just one with your divine deity, your chosen deity. 
and then Sri Ramakrishna tells his own experience what had happened to him that we will take up in our next reading. So till then let us uh, contemplate on this teaching of uh, Sri Ramakrishna that uh, how, how to reach that level. Let us pray to Sri Ramakrishna, let us pray to Ma that make such an experience our experience too. That we take up this path, we take up this path of spirituality and we lessen our workload so that we get the opportunity of contemplating on him. We, we get an opportunity of knowing him, knowing our mother and then the oneness. Then the final oneness will come when the journey is about to end. So that is uh, our reading of uh, today. And tomorrow we will take up uh, Sri Ramakrishna's own experience, how his uh, works came to an end. That is for our next reading. Om Namah Shri Bhagavate Ramakrishna. Shri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Thakur Jai Jai Swaraj